I am sure that most of you have come across these transformation videos online where you see a before photo of a guy who is either really skinny or really fat who is just unhappy with life in general he then joins the gym and starts working out and shows his progress by uh, taking pictures and videos of him working out and by the end of the video he is just buff and muscular followed by a really corny quote like uh, no pain no gain work hard in silence let the success do the talking and so on this video is slightly different even i had put on a lot of weight during my teenage years over the years i have been able to maintain a slightly healthier lifestyle but usually when i went to the gym all i did was work out and i didn't use my phone much in this video instead of talking about the physical transformation that is very popular on youtube i would like to focus on the mental transformation that i personally experienced before i start this video i would like to tell you that i am still a work in progress and i'm nowhere close to being a finished good the day you think you are a finished good is the day you stop growing in other words you stop getting better because you're so content with where you are at the moment i honestly would never want to be done i look at this as a lifelong lifestyle kind of thing and so should you before i start this video i would like to share my story and where i began let's get into it as a teenager I was one among the many people who put on a lot of weight during their teenage years. Factors that affect this weight gain can be both internal and external. For me, it was more of external as I was eating a lot more. My family had just moved to a new city and I was the new kid in town. I didn't have many friends and my only companion or the constant in my life was food which I turned to very often. As a result of this, I put on a lot of weight. Uh, along with being the new kid i was also the fat kid and being fat and having no friends is not a very good sign but i didn't take too much of it to heart all i did was eat more as a result during the course of one year i gained about 30 kilos so at the end of year 7 at the height of 5 8 i weighed 85 kilograms i vividly remember one embarrassing incident that stuck with me over the years uh, it was 7th grade and uh, we had swimming lessons in swimming lessons we have to take our shirts off i remember that boy pointing laughing at me and calling me doodwala those of you who don't know doodwala translates to milk man that may probably be because i had so much fat in my chest area that it resemble the female counterpart uh, i remember going home that day feeling not so good about my body and myself uh, i was feeling kind of sad actually and i knew something needed to change but i didn't know how to go about it let's fast forward a few years when i reached grade 9 uh, i fell into the category of people who did way too much cardio so basically i went from a big potato to a smaller potato but nonetheless i was still a potato <laughs> I remember watching my favorite TV show at the time Arrow and looking at the main character Oliver Queen and watching the opening sequence to that where he does all these crazy workout videos and push-ups and all this salmon ladder and all that and I remember thinking to myself damn that must be so cool to have such a great physique like that and so I also decided I would try and work towards it but I didn't know how to yet During this time I met a friend at my maths class uh, who used to work out. He is the one who introduced me to the gym, the mecca of gains with a z. <laughs> I was fortunate enough to find a good gym which I could afford to go to on a regular basis. I have been lifting for about 3 and a half years now and for the purpose of this video I would like to classify it into three phases. That is the first day to the end of the first year or uh, first year to the end of the second year and second year to the end of the third year phase 1 the first day at the gym i went there along with two of my friends one of whom who had got me to join and the other guy was the athletic kid in class who joined just for fun on the first day we were introduced to all the gym equipments and as a part of the warm up we were asked to do 10 push ups while the other two had no problems in doing it i could do zero <laughs> That's right. A uh, 16 year old me got on the push up position, went all the way down but just couldn't push myself back up. At the end of day 1, we 
we had just gotten introduced to the basic movements and the basic exercises and i remember looking over at my athletic friend who was wearing a sleeveless stringer and his arms were just popping veins running all throughout his arms and his shoulders looked like boulders it just seemed like he just had to touch the dumbbell and he would explode with muscle mass i remember going home and feeling like shit but that did not stop me from going to the gym either ways Everybody has different starting points. Deal with it. I goes to say, don't compare your chapter one with somebody else's chapter seven. We all start somewhere, and as cheesy as it may sound, all we have to do is focus on getting better than who we were yesterday. So basically, day to day, you won't notice any drastic change. But these changes that occur day to day accumulate to form greater changes, which are noticeable over a long period of time. Just a quick change in setup because I think the lighting here is way better. Phase two, consistency. I joined the gym during the summer vacations in my school along with a couple of my friends. At the time, we were basically jobless. All we had to do was get up in the morning, get to the gym, eat, sleep, and repeat. But those two months went by really fast. All this changed as soon as the summer vacations came to an end. It was grade twelve, a pretty important year academically. And trust me, living in India doesn't make it any better. As majority of the students were bombarded with both school and tuitions after school to basically learn whatever we had learned in school. Makes sense, right? So as a result, the other two friends I started working out with kind of stopped. But I, on the other hand, had fallen so much in love with the process that I didn't stop. I remember getting home as soon as tuition classes got over, changing into my gym clothes and getting my ass to the gym. However busy I got, I tried to go to the gym at least twice a week. Maybe part of the reason why I was so obsessed with it is because I got a reality check during phase one, wherein I felt like utter shit. So in order to compensate for that. I try to work extra hard in order to reach the level of that athletic kid. And trust me, there were some days where I did not feel like going to the gym. Uh, that's where I came across another video by a YouTuber called Elliot Hulls. The video is titled "How Successful People Train," where Elliot Hulls quotes a quote. The saying goes like this: uh, "Successful people do what they have to do, whether they feel like it or not." Uh, again uh, successful people do what they have to do whether they feel like it or not whether they feel like it or not uh, if you want to be successful there are some times wherein you won't feel like doing the things you want to do but if you want to be successful you have to do it whether you feel like it or not some days after you watch like a motivational gym video you feel like going to the gym and working out what about the other days where you don't feel motivated that's where discipline kicks in on the days you don't feel very motivated if you stay consistent and just go to the gym it's better than not going in the first place just a side note i watched this particular video so many times i tried to brainwash myself into believing it and i reached a point wherein i actually did i remember writing this quote down on a sticky note and sticking it on the screen of my phone and uh, whenever i felt like taking my phone and scrolling through social media reading that quote really stopped me from doing so I honestly didn't feel like studying but if i had to be successful i had to do it this in turn reflected on my results as well uh, guess who topped the 12th board exam in my class <laughs> this uh, help me sticking with the concept of consistency and uh, building the initial momentum is the hardest part once you build a routine it's pretty easy i remember one night where i was at the gym and the athletic kid in my class had also decided to come to the gym that night uh, and by that time i had gotten considerably stronger uh, compared to where i had started off from my strength levels at the end of the first year for the main compound lifts were uh, i could uh, deadlift 120 kilos I could squat 80 kilos. I could overhead press 50 kilos, and I could bench press 60 kilos. Uh, this is compared to where I had started off with. Uh, I couldn't do even a single push-up, nor could I bench press the bar. So in one year, I was pretty happy with those results. And as bros, obviously, we were doing the bench press. Uh, I remember loading 20 kilos on each side, which basically makes it a 60 kilo bench press. He brought the weight all the way to the bottom, but just could not push back up. <laughs> Okay, uh, not gonna lie. I kind of got an ego boost. 
whereas I had no problem benching that same 60 kilos for many repetitions. That taught me the important lesson of consistency. He might have felt content where he was on day one, uh, whereas I, to be very honest, was pretty jealous of him. Phase 3 Years 2 to 3 uh, I would classify the beginning of phase 3 as soon as I joined college. I was in school and used to live at home. Uh, I could come home to home cook meals and I often did not think too much about nutrition and food. Uh, that is both good and bad. Uh, bad for a person like me who likes to eat a lot. So I would usually end up eating a bit more. But in the view of muscle building and strength gaining, it's pretty good. So the regular Indian diet is not catered towards muscle building. I ate a good quantity of food that did not negatively impact my performance at the gym. It may have made me slightly fluffier, but nonetheless, it made me a lot stronger. And at the end of grade 12, my strength levels were as follows. Uh, my deadlift was at 170 kg, uh, squat was at 110 kilos, uh, overhead press was at 60 kilos, and fourth was weighted dips, which I gave more priority over the bench press which I could do 40 kilos along with my body weight in a hardness. So basically that meant 120 kilos of weighted dips. I would consider myself reasonably strong compared to where I began. But things changed as soon as I joined college. My strength levels got pretty stagnant. Uh, for the first time, I had hit a plateau. I did not realize this until a few months had passed. It was Christmas break and I went home. Only then did my mom point out to me how skinny I had gotten. And it's not like I woke up with abs or anything. Basically lost fat from all these pointless places like my thighs, my lower back, a bit from my arms and my cheeks especially. Only then did I realize that something was not adding up. I had been putting the same amount of efforts that I had been putting since school. Uh, but yet the results that I got was not up to par. Honestly, I wasted about 6 to 8 months not making any progress. Uh, one of the major factors why I did not make any progress or did not even know that I was not making progress was because I was not tracking my progress. I did not know how much I lifted last time and how much I needed to lift the next workout in order to get better. Uh, this was because I was not focused on nutrition. I was so used to coming back to home cooked meals that I was not very conscious of what I ate. After I joined college, I basically ate the food that was available to me at the hostel, which was very fixed in quantity. And since I was so active, I did not realize that I was eating way lesser than I actually needed. Looking back in retrospect, it's a major screw up on my part. I cannot emphasize the importance of tracking your progress. I remember asking myself why I was not getting the desired results. Uh, only then did I stumble upon a program by a person named Bob Proctor. Uh, his program on paradigm shifts blew my mind. In this program, he talks about results and how results always tell the truth. The line goes like this. Results always tell the truth. By their fruit, you'll know them. Results always tell the truth. This was the second Eureka moment for me. Uh, it all made so much sense as to why I did not get the desired results. And from there, I knew that if I needed to get the desired output, I needed to give the sufficient input. In other words, taking care of my nutrition, which I slowly and gradually did. I started off by counting my protein intake and slowly started tracking my macros. In the course of 6 months, I went from looking like this to looking like this. I would say that was a significant transformation in just 6 months. That brings me to the end of phase 3.